welcome back to my channel my name is Pilumi and if it's your first time coming across my channel you're welcome on this channel I upload sewing and sometimes craft tutorials but mostly sewing DIY so if you like that kind of content don't forget to subscribe like this video share the video all that good stuff please do support me thank you very much so in today's video I'll be reviewing and showing you like a so long of the most recommended the most I think sewn <laughs> pattern in the sewing community I've been recommended this pattern several times but I just never got around to sewing it until I was gifted the pattern by a fellow sewist on Instagram by the name of so star Tina or Tina star so I'm not even sure right now but I'll leave her details in the description box below so do check out her blog and follow her on Instagram she makes a amazing amazing makes so yeah i do have my notes on my laptop here so i don't forget what i want to say so i'm just gonna like kind of explain to you how i achieved oh yeah i haven't even introduced the pattern okay so it's the odin i really don't know how to pronounce it it's odin odin pattern the odin kami by true bias patterns so yeah it's I've literally been recommended this pattern several times on Facebook. People are like, oh, it's a friend, beginner friendly, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it is beginner friendly. I have attested to that right now. And it's very simple to make, not complicated at all. And so yeah, uh, like I said, I was gifted this pattern by a fellow sewist on Instagram. And fortunately, it's also the Ogden um, anniversary um, in August. I think that's when the pattern was released. So it was just perfect timing for me to finally make this pattern. And it's sort of like a, also a collaboration with me and, and Tino. Um, she will post um, details of hacking this pattern on her blog. And I will also share this on my YouTube channel and on my blog. So do check that out. Okay, so let's just get right into this pattern. So it's a long story. <laughs> uh, so Mm, let's see the first thing was the pattern the pattern was very easy to put together um i glued it together instead of solo taping it because i didn't want to cut out all the borders and then solo tape it was just easier for me to fold the borders and just glue the pattern together so it was just about 14 pieces um so it was easy to glue together it was easy to understand you no know, one two three four i put it together and that was that so the pattern was easy to um to assemble so i'm gonna put a clip of me putting it together right here as well and uh what else okay now so cutting the pattern like when i started putting the pattern together i initially thought i was going to trace out my size and i cut out the whole thing but believe me is sometimes lazy <laughs> As you guys know and the shortcut is for me to just cut the pattern so I cut out a size 12 um, but next time I will cut out a size 10 because it's cut on the bias and so it's a, a bit more free and so yeah it's a bit loose for me at the sides and the straps are lower than I would want it so definitely I will cut out a size 10 so yeah this is this is the cami basically um i would just feel more comfortable wearing a, a blazer over it but it's a very versatile piece anyways um plus it's it's cold right now so when it's summer i'll definitely be rocking this with a hat you know nice shorts and everything but right now i need a jacket so i stay warm um but this is the cami i i really love it and i used um a light chiffon the different types of chiffons <laughs> i'm not even sure what specific chiffon this is but this is chiffon basically i've had this fabric for a very long time um my mom bought it for me in nigeria in a market called busi market in nigeria so that's where she got the fabric from um what else about this pattern mm, oh yeah so the first time i attempted this pattern which was like a day after i made this a day before i made this I wanted to use uh I wanted to hack the pattern number one and I wanted to use silk or satin so I could make a slip dress. Uh but the pattern didn't I mean the dress didn't turn out well and I, at first I thought it was because of the way I cut it at the bias, maybe I did something wrong and then I sent it to Tino and she sent me an article of you know tips on how to sew on the bias and I did implement those tips for this chiffon dress and I'm gonna leave a link no this chiffon um cami and I'm gonna leave a link to that article in the description box as well but I discovered after making the cami that you know what the way that the the cami is cut out the bottom is very um flared and when i was making the dress i just um extended the length 
so it was really loose around my tummy and hip area and the front had a lot of give and the back didn't have a lot of give so it was just looking very floppy and I decided to just take that dress cut it in half and then make a slip skirt so I have a slip skirt with that fabric um there's no tutorial on that but you will see it on my Instagram so do follow me on Instagram to see how that slip dress turned into a slip skirt <laughs> but um it was just nice for me to you know actually sew the, the camera first and see how it looks like before planning any hacking thing and that's what I should have done first so I decided to just you know I'm not gonna hack it I'm gonna just make another cami with the exact you know pattern no changes and just see how it looks like on me so now I know that I'm gonna cut a size 10 and I don't think I can hack this into a slip dress because it's just the way the pattern is so maybe I can hack it into another like more looser long dress with ruffles there's so many ideas um, but it cannot turn into a slip skirt you know that would have to like alter the pattern completely and it wouldn't be an ogdin dress you know it wouldn't be an ogdin kami pattern so that's what it is and then um one of the tips that i got um from the article that i was sent was that um when you're cutting with uh bias especially like clay fabrics like silk and chiffon that you need to cut it on one layer the first time i did it on the satin um i didn't i folded it over and cut on the fold so that also might have affected the way you know the drip was on the back and on the front um so i decided to cut on one layer so i cut it um i placed the pattern on one side and then when i was done cutting that side and i flipped it over to the other side but i made sure that i maxed the center front so that i could just you know place it properly on on the center front and one side is not like floppy so that's one tip and then the other tip is to make sure you pin or use pattern weights like pin the living light out of that <laughs> fabric pin every single centimeter if you can just so that the the fabric doesn't move under the pattern so that's what i did i made sure i pinned everything and that was it i cut also i cut everything on the bias including the facing also on the satin um i cut the main fabric on the bias and then i cut the facing on the grain and it was tight inside and then loose outside so yeah that wasn't nice so this time around i made sure that i cut all the pieces on the grain uh, on the bias the, the facing and the main fabric except the straps because the straps need to be sturdy so that was what i did and okay so now i've talked about the changes i made and you know size and everything so now the actual sewing of the pattern was actually very easy i sewed it under an hour actually no an hour because i had to also record so that took time um but it was actually very easy it doesn't take time at all i enjoyed the process was no stress <laughs> there was no stress so for the first time i did it i was actually stressed because i'm like why is this looking so upside down but the kami looks really nice with the with the chiffon fabric and i'm definitely going to try this pattern again on ankara of course i'm going to try it with the silk because i really do want uh, like a sleep um kami or a sleep dress kind of thing but we'll see uh, okay so now the sewing let's get to the sewing part uh sewing the Odin kami <laughs> thing i did was to um pin the front and the back pieces together um as well as the front and back facing and i decided to use a french seam because i wanted just a clean finish the pattern calls for just a normal seam but i wanted a clean finish because i didn't have a serger and i didn't want to start zigzagging everything and because if i zigzag and it's got all the buyers my seams will be straight it'll be very um wobbly so um to sew a french seam all you need to do is instead of placing the fabric right size together place it wrong size together and then sew your straight stitch first and then you press it you trim your excess fabric and then you fold it to the wrong side and then you just close that row edge um with a straight stitch and that's very easy so that's what i did I did a French seam um yeah so to do a French like, I've really explained how to do a French seam so I'm not gonna repeat that again just watch what I did I'm gonna insert a clip here and then after um sewing the front and the back and the facing the same way um the next thing I did after sewing was to sew the straps um, um I thought the straps were a bit short so I decided to um add about four inches to the length 
but I had to trim that off because the cami was too low at first um, in fact I must have added more than four inches because that was lower than I would prefer so to sew the straps you fold it in half lengthwise so that the length so that the right sides are facing and then sew at half an inch allowance trim off the excess fabric and then I used the safety pin to turn to the right side and then I pressed that was really easy sewing the straps So, flip it and press, that's it. So the straps were done. And then the next thing I did uh, was to pin the front, the straps to the front and the back. Also, the pattern said to use a basting stitch to hold down the straps first, but it's pretty me. I don't like extra steps. <laughs> so I just pinned my pattern, or my, I just pinned my straps and then i pinned the face into the main fabric right sides together so the front to the front the back to the back right sides oh. together and i made sure i pinned every single inch because i don't want any funny movement when i'm sewing uh, and then i just sewed with a straight stitch around the neckline and the armhole um but i while i was sewing i forgot to make a notch at the center front so that i can make sure i sew the v because it's kind of like it kind of like has a soft v um but right now it just looks like a, a curved a soup neckline but that's fine um but then the back is actually a v and but i like it like that okay so after sewing that um then i made snips or notches around the curve of the neckline and armhole just to make sure that everything turns nicely and you know presses flat Okay, after this then I pressed and top stitched the seam allowance, the lining on the inside and then finally pressed it. So the final step is to hem the facing and although the pattern did say to hem the facing a long time ago, I didn't do that. I just zigzagged um, the raw edges of the facing because it's going to be inside anyways and then I hemmed the kami itself by folding the hem twice and just doing a narrow stitch all around and that was it i was done with my kami it was so 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 easy and um yeah then the final step and the most fulfilling part for me was having to sew my levels Ugh, finally i can put labels on my clothes <laughs> Yeah, so I had to sew um, my label on the cami and I really enjoyed that. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you don't know that I'm starting my own clothing label and it's going to be like a made-to-order sustainable brand because I just want to share my love for slow fashion and handmade clothing with the rest of the world, literally. And it's going to be African-inspired, um, mostly with Ankara prints and just a mix of, you know, plain modern prints as well. So do look out for that. Follow me on Instagram. Follow my business page at um, alake.lola. And more details will be coming on when we're going to launch and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. Watching me explain to you how I made my own version of the Ugdin Kami. Because I literally made my own version because I did not follow the pattern step by step. I followed it very loosely. But the result is still the same. It's well finished with the French seam. Um, I, I just love it. So like I said, I would do a size 10 next time so that, you know, the, the cam is a bit higher. I wouldn't add extra allowance to my to my straps because I thought it was a bit short. I think it's fine. Um, other than that, I really love this cami. It's, very, it's a very, very nice um, feminine piece that can be layered in the winter like this with a jacket or just one as it is in summer so i'm really looking forward to playing around with this and making more with different fabrics and yeah that's the end of this video my sew and tell of the ogden kami it's august it's ogden anniversary so woo -woo, i did it <laughs> so yeah that's the end of this video like i've said that three times already Thank you for watching do subscribe for more content like this like the video share the video leave a comment below tell me what you loved about the Ogden Kami or what you love about the Ogden Kami if you've sewn this Kami if you haven't I'll link I'll, I'll leave a link to their store in the description bo box down below for you to purchase your own Ogden Kami and what else do I want to say that's it thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye guys